guys, it's your girl Lisa and I'm your English tutor as well. So today we're going to talk about how to challenge a prompt. If you don't take anything else away from this video today, there is one thing I do want you to take away and it's the fact that you should always, always try to challenge a prompt. A prompt or an essay topic is a statement. It is not necessarily an accurate statement. So whether or not you agree with it is completely up to you. You could agree with it wholeheartedly or you could disagree with it completely or you could sit on the fence. So maybe you would agree with it 70% but then you would disagree with it 30% because I'm really good at maths and I can do percentages. Just kidding. By challenging a prompt, you were able to show the teacher something a little different compared to everyone else who's just going to agree with what the prompt is saying. And this is exactly what English is all about. It's all about your interpretation of the text and no one can tell you if you're right and wrong. You just go out there, you say what you wanna say in your perspective on that prompt you back it up with evidence and then you're pretty much going to be set. So don't be scared and feel like you have to agree with a prompt. Be different, show your teacher something that's original, show them a unique way of thinking and that's where you actually get the major points. So if you're not used to challenging a prompt or you're not really sure how you go about challenging a prompt, then I'm just going to show you a very quick and easy formula that you can follow just to get you started in terms of challenging the prompt. How many times have I said that so far? So the text I'm going to be using today is Medea by Euripides. And I know that a lot of you out there are studying this text, but a lot of you aren't either. And don't worry if you're not, because the advice that I'm going to give you throughout this video is still relevant to you. And I'm going to explain everything so that it's very clear to you as well. So make sure you keep watching. All right, so I'm gonna look at my laptop, which is just down here, but I'm going to have it out on the screen for you guys. So here we've got a particular prompt and it's the only people we can feel sorry for in Medea are the children. Everyone else gets what they deserve. Discuss. Okay, so just as a really quick rundown of what Medea is about, Medea is about this crazy biatch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's about this lady called Medea and her husband Jason has recently divorced her. She's left abandoned all on her own with her two children. So you would think at this point it's just some normal story about divorcing and abandonment. But actually Jason abandoned her for a princess. So you can see how perhaps he was doing it in his own interest. He was more thinking about himself and not so much the love that he had for Medea previously, right? So Medea gets really angry and by really angry I mean exceptionally angry. She starts to kill everyone around Jason in order to get revenge on him. So firstly, she kills the princess. She kills the princess's dad, so the king of Corinth. Then she actually goes and kills her own two sons because although it's like the most terrible thing that she could have ever done, especially her being a mother, she knew that by killing her children, that would be the ultimate form of revenge. So a really quick breakdown or formula of any prompt you get is to follow the yes, no, but rule. And this will always guarantee you a way to help you challenge the prompt, especially if you're somebody who can only kind of see it the one way. You just see the statement that's written there and then you're pretty much like, yeah, that makes sense. I'm just gonna agree with it. So you break up your essay into three components, okay? And yes, you can think of each component being part of one body paragraph. So the yes is the first body paragraph, the no is the second body paragraph, and the but is the third body paragraph, which is typical of a essay where you have three main body paragraphs, plus intro, plus conclusion. So this isn't a very strict rule. Again, it's more just like a guideline. Once you get used to it, you can definitely twist it out. You can try it in different ways. So for my yes, my contention is always just agreeing with the prompt. So I've written here, yes, we do feel sorry for the children. Everyone else gets what they deserve, which is pretty much the essay prompt, right? So don't mind me, I've just written this in a very basic way because I don't wanna just fluff around with nice vocabulary, I just wanna give it to you straight and then you guys can just go off and do your own thing with it. With my yes contention, I have an example and that is Jason himself. One of the arguments can be that Jason gets what he deserves because he was the one who ditched Medea and in the end, that's what led to his demise. He lost absolutely everyone around him and additionally, he had very misogynistic views. So if you guys don't know what misogynistic is, I'm gonna pop it up for you. It is new vocabulary for you guys. Basically, misogynistic is when males look down on females and males feel more superior than females. So 
He illustrates a lot of that throughout the play where he talks down about women. So a lot of audience members who watch this play or read it tend to really despise him. So in that essence, he gets what he deserves. And of course we feel sorry for the children because they didn't do anything wrong and yet they died. So that was that. Then the next part is the no. So this is the part where I disagree with the prompt and I try to think of something completely different. So what I've argued here is while we do feel sorry for the children, not everyone gets what they deserve. Okay. So see how now I'm starting to shift my argument. I'm trying to walk down a new pathway. So I'm actually going to use Jason again, and I'm going to say that Jason doesn't necessarily get what he deserves. And I know you guys are going to be like, Hey Lisa, wait a minute. Isn't that kind of just contradicting what you said before? Yes, it actually is but I'm going to show you in just a second how you can avoid making it contradictory, okay? So let me just explain this example first. So what I want to say with Jason is that while Jason was left alone with everyone around him killed, he didn't necessarily deserve it because back in Athenian times, which is when this play was written, Medea was actually not Greek. So the fact that he married her and welcomed her into the Greek society, that was a massive thing, especially in a xenophobic society. And xenophobic is another vocab word for you guys. So the fact that he did that for her already sort of meant that he had already done his part because there was no way she would have been welcomed into Greek society in the first place. So when he left her, it's kind of like, I've already given you everything you need, so you can kind of just go off on your own now. Furthermore, Jason also wanted what was best for his children. And in order to get what was best for his children, he would marry the princess because this would help with his family bloodline. So in that sense, you can sort of be sympathetic to Jason to an extent. So that's why with English, it's not so black and white. Try to always see things from two different angles. So I've said one, he deserves what he gets and two, that he doesn't deserve what he gets. So now what am I going to do with this? Because they're two completely contradictory parts. All you need to do is chuck in maybe words. Okay. So maybe words are words that are like sometimes can be, they're not a hundred percent in certainty, not like always and never. Okay. And we call these modality words. So high modality words are words that are always never, whereas low modality words are sometimes maybe can. So you're a little bit fluffy. So with the yes contention, what you can say is yes, we do feel sorry for the children and everyone else gets what they deserve to a certain extent. As soon as you add that, all right, it gives you that opportunity. It gives you that room to argue. Then with the next one, you could say, nevertheless, Jason doesn't necessarily deserve all of the punishment. So the yes and no contentions are relatively straightforward because all you need to do is just say yes and then just say no. All right. But then it comes to the but part. Now, what about the but? But, but, but. I always like saying but because I think it's so funny um, because it's like but. <laughs> um, anyways, so with the but, now you're trying to think of another rebuttal. This is really the biggest opportunity you have to step beyond what's just the norms of disagreeing or agreeing and trying to seek out new avenues of a contention. So whenever I think about the but, I try to look at each of the keywords and try to think about what are different ways I can interpret this keyword. So let's say for example with deserve, I've only looked at it in the punishment way. So deserve in a form of punishment, but what about deserve in the form of reward, right? Because it could mean both. So in my but paragraph, what I'm going to say is that Medea isn't just about, you know, what people deserve in the punishment way, but also in the rewarding way. Some people ask, oh, what if I go off topic? You're not going to go off topic as long as you stick to the keywords. Simple as that. So in this third paragraph, I'm going to talk about Medea herself because she's the main character. And I do feel that it is important that you talk about main characters in any essay. So what I'm going to say here is that while we feel sorry for Medea, at the same time, we don't as well, because she actually, while she gets punished, she gets rewarded too. Just like Jason, she is left with absolutely nothing in the end. She's lost her husband, she's lost her kids, and not just that, 
but she is completely stripped of her maternity. So because she killed her children, not only does this inflict pain on Jason, but also on herself because she's no longer a mother. Yet at the same time, she's rewarded for a lot of the things she's done. At the very end of the play, she gets away scot-free. She has a golden chariot given to her and she basically just flies away at the end of the play and that's it. So you'd expect that she would get punished at the end of the play, because of all the horrible things that she's done, just kind of like Macbeth in Shakespeare, if you've seen that play or if you've read it. So it's a deus ex machina, uh, which is another vocab for you guys. Holla! Lots of vocab today, which means that you think someone's going to get punished, but they don't get punished. And that's as simple as that. So in the end, by getting away scot-free on this golden chariot and moving to Athens, where she's actually guaranteed herself a safety haven there and she already has the king of Athens Aegeus waiting for her and she's going to start a new family with him and have new babies so in a sense it's like she's just going to restart her life and everything like lives happily ever after in a way so you can see by using the yes no but formula it just pushes me to try to think of this prompt from different angles which is fantastic and you know, you don't always have to set up your essay as a yes, no, but formula, but at least it's there for you so that when you're planning your essay, you can think about it and be like, okay, how am I going to challenge this particular prompt? So obviously I could talk about challenging the prompt or essays a lot more, but I just wanna gauge whether or not you guys like these type of videos. So if you do, please give me a thumbs up because that will let me know if I should do more of these like tutorial style, you know, tutor in your home, but, me speaking to you via the camera type of videos. That way I can also have a look at a lot of different texts as well to try to help you guys out as much as possible. But yeah, definitely thumbs up, comment below if there is something you want me to talk about and make sure you subscribe because I love it when I have students like you subscribe because it just shows me that I should be making more of these videos and that you guys are enjoying them. It's also a fantastic excuse if you want to procrastinate and you want to stop doing some studying, but you want to watch some YouTube, but you don't want to feel guilty, you can watch me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so have a very lovely Merry Christmas to you guys. I hope you guys have the best Christmas ever with lots of family love and friends and lots of presents and just basically enjoying a fantastic day. So have an awesome one, guys. I will see you guys next week, just before New Year's. Bye. You're probably like, oh, come on, Lisa. I do not want to be reading my text during my summer holidays. Sorry, that is what I'm telling you.